here comes the gravel lizard of the week. Did you know that banded walleyes are a thing? And nothing sinks faster than a cell phone. We got that and more coming up right now in Target Walleye's Top 5 presented by Seafoam. Let's dive on in. Let's kick things off with the gravel lizard of the week. We got Isabella, aka Lady Bass Fishing on Instagram, who caught this insanely thick 27 and a quarter incher in southern Ontario. And that belly, though. <laughs> Another just amazing fish from Isabella, who was using her go-to hard water walleye bait, a Freedom Tackle Hammered Minnow Spoon, the same spoon that she used a couple years back to ice a couple of new PBs on the same fishing trip. Those Freedom Tackle Hammered Minnow Spoons and the original Minnow Spoon have still kind of somehow been flying under the radar. I'm not sure how those things are money. I've used them and can confirm they work. I mean, look at this thing underwater. It's like taking a jigging spoon, a rattle bait, a jerk bait, a blade bait. I don't know, combining all of those things into one unit, that thing is just nasty. nasty. Number two. Have you ever heard of a banded walleye before? Yes, a banded fish. Apparently waterfallers aren't the only ones you get to chase around bling. Leave it to NWT pro Dwayne Helm, aka Dewey, who iced this banded walleye, I believe he's in the Dakotas, and he's using a Rapala jigging shadow wrap, which he said is quickly becoming one of his favorite baits. Now I've actually been sent quite a few pics over the years of banded walleyes. It seems like it's mostly a North Dakota, maybe South Dakota thing. The Dakotas are just different, right? <laughs> in a good way. But I had seen enough that it made me wonder if there was anybody out there who was maybe starting a collection of bands on a Minn Kota trolling motor remote lanyard. You know, sort of how you see waterfall, waterfall, fall, fall, like a waterfaller would on their call lanyard. So I had posted this poorly photoshopped pic in the Target Walleye email asking if there was anybody out there. And sure enough, I got a response literally within the hour. And these pics came from a fella named Steve Nelson in North Dakota, who had actually caught five banded walleyes during just a three-day fishing trip on Lake Oahe and started a nice collection of his own. Steve said that he actually ended up losing 50 crankbaits during that three-day trip, trolling in some really snaggy stuff. But he was able to recoup a little chunk of that after one of those banded fish had a $100 reward tag on it. You just never know, man. <laughs> Number three. Well, you've seemed to like it so far, so let's do another quick episode of Burbid Eat the Darndest Things. I was tagged in these pictures from Derelict Fishing in Wyoming, who caught a shmedia mesh 20-inch burbot that had a bit of a bulge going on. He popped her open, and it had 89 crayfish in its belly. 89, and that's just a 20-inch fish which is all the more reason that burbot are literally my spirit animal. Number four. Cell phones have got to be the only precious metal that drops quicker than tungsten. And John White got to experience that firsthand the other day when his buddy Alex came running over after a little kerplunk and his iPhone 13 had gone down in the drink about 20 feet deep. But these fellas absolutely got their MacGyver on. They fashioned together a 24-foot net, and I could not stop laughing when I saw the picture of him holding that thing up. They lined everything up with an AquaView. I believe it was an HD 10i Pro underwater camera. A couple of failed attempts, but they finally were able to scoop up that precious metal, get it topside, and yep, Alex said that it turned right on when he fired her up. It still worked. Impressive recovery mission, fellas. But I'm just saying you might want to consider investing in one of those rogue fishing phone tethers. I know they're designed for kayak anglers, but I'm pretty sure nobody loses more junk down the hole than ice fishermen and women. I finally got my hands on one and a uh, pretty cheap investment. Plus, they take up a lot less room in a sled than a 24-foot net would. Number five. You want another rant of the day? You get another rant of the day. Pick up your dang trash. Now, I mean, that goes for everything and anything, but right now I'm specifically going to talk about cigarette butts. I saw a Facebook post the other day of someone complaining about them being left on the ice. 
I could not agree more. It's one of my biggest ice fishing pet peeves among many, and it is just flat out disgusting. But I hate it even more now after seeing a comment and photo under that post from Andy Fioca, who said that he had actually kept a couple of perch to clean and they had eaten cigarette butts because after the ice melts in the winter, any garbage and trash left on that ice is now in the water, right? How disgusting is that? And you know, in semi-related news, I just want to give a big shout out to Zach Peicher for leaving it better than he found it. On a recent fishing trip in central Minnesota, he was going to go do some shore fishing on the Mississippi River, and he hauled out a whole slab of yuck with him at the end of the day. And he still managed to stick a few quality smallmouth at the same time, which is totally my kind of fishing karma. So big props to Zach for taking time out of his fishing trip to pick up after some jerks who, I don't know, deserve to have their fishing line snap on every hook set for the rest of their life. Do better. All right, that wraps up this week's top five. A big shout out to Seafoam for keeping us running smooth and making this fun video series possible. And if you want more walleye and ice fishing related content like this, sign up for our free Target Walleye emails at targetwalleye.com and I will see you back in seven. <laughs>